So let's talk about creating users in Azure Active Directory. So I'm here in my Office Admin 365, or Microsoft Office 365 Admin Center. There we go, get the name right. And I'm going to go to Users. Now I have options here for active users, contacts, guest users, and deleted users. Deleted users obviously is users that we've removed. And once you delete a user, it'll stay there for about 30 days. But unless you empty the... Uh, deleted users but when you do that you lose potentially all of the data and all of the mail that was associated with that user so you want to be really careful about that and make sure you back it up if you think you're going to need it guest users are users that you invite into your system but they're not necessarily your users i mean they have an account and they can use stuff on your system but their guests are not actually your users contacts is primarily used for mail so i can create a contact and i can give it an email give somebody an email address from outside my organization and associate that with contact and then people in my organization can email that contact and it'll show up just like they're emailing a standard user but it'll just deliver it outside what we want to take a look at is active users so i'm going to come here to active users and right now I only have me. Now, we're going to have some different tools across here. And remember, Microsoft changes this from time to time. So we've got add a user, user templates, add multiple users, multi-factor authentication. And then these little three dots here give us some more options, including deleting a user, refresh, resetting passwords, exporting users, directory synchronization, and team setup. So let's start by adding a standard user. So I'm going to come here and click on add user. All right, here are my steps. I need to set basics, product licenses, optional settings, and then I'm ready to finish. Now I need to set a display name and a username. So I'm going to start by creating a full name. Even though I technically don't need it, it's going to be a little more useful. So we're going to create George Smith. And then whatever I set as my first name and last name, when I tab down to display name, it'll uh, put that together and give me a display name. Now I can modify that if I need to. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that intact. Then I'm going to set a username, and we're going to call him G Smith. And then here's where we can set our domain. Now on Bassett 321 or Bassett321.onmicrosoft.com, that's kind of my little test domain that I'm working with. If I had another domain set up, because most of the time you're going to have an onmicrosoft.com domain, and then you're going to have a domain that's actually your domain. So it's going to be your .com, .net, .edu, .whatever, your actual domain. And so if you want to create a user using that, then you'd click your drop down here and you'd choose the domain. Now before you can do that, you have to actually set up the domain. And we're going to show you how to do that in a later video. But just be aware that if you want them to be something, your new user to be something other than your on Microsoft.com domain, you'll need to change that here. Now I can automatically create a password. I can require this user to change password when they first log on. And then I can send password and email upon completion. I'm going to uncheck this automatically create. And I'm going to specify a password. Now this is something that a lot of people will do. is They'll create a default password for all the users they create. And then that way you don't have to communicate to the user and say, hey, this is the special password that just got created. And remember, down here we have the option we can email the password to that user. And then we can specify what email address they want to, we want that to go to. And obviously we shouldn't send it to the email of the account we just created. That's going to get us nowhere. But if you've got a secondary email address, then we can send the password there, although that's not secure. So another way you can do it is to create your password and have that kind of be a company default password and then make sure that you require the user to change password at next logon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. And then I need to associate this person with licenses. So I can set a location, and then assign the user a product license. And here are going to be all the products that I have licenses for. Now, at the moment, I don't, this is a trial account. So I don't have any more licenses that I can assign to them. And I can create a user without a license. 
Now, they may have li very limited to no access if you do that, but that's okay. If I had, and I'm not purchasing a subscription for these demos, so that's why we don't have anything else. But then I could select which license I wanted them to have access to, and then down here I could select the apps that I wanted them to have access to. At the moment, there isn't anything because I'm creating the user without a license because I don't have one. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and then we have some optional settings. So I have the profile information. So this is all optional. None of this is required. But you're going to recognize a lot of these from Active Directory in an on-premise environment. So I can set their title, department, office, phone number. Okay. These are informational items that people can look up a user in Active Directory and find that information. Now the other thing I can do is I can set the role. And I have several different roles here. So the default is user, no admin access. If I want to give them admin center access, then I would select this, and then I'm going to check which roles I want them to have. So I can have them be an exchange administrator, global administrator, global reader, help desk admin. Well, you get the idea. And then for more information, I can come over and just hover over these little information icons, and it will tell me what this person would be allowed to do. And you'll notice these are check marks, so I can give them multiple roles if I want them to have it. If I leave it as user with no admin center access, then they just don't even see the admin center. And if somebody is not going to be an administrator for me, that's probably what I want. All right. So let me go ahead and click Next and then Finish. And I have now added my user. There we go. And so I now have a new user named George Smith. And you'll see here licenses username now the license this thing here is convenient however if you give them a bunch of licenses they may not be able to access everything or let me try that again you may not see everything so this field here will only contain so many licenses and it may be beneficial at that point to go to powershell where you can uh, use the get msol user and view their licenses that way all right so that's adding a user now, I also have access to user templates. So here, I can create a template for users that I want to create in bulk. So let's say I want a group of users to have similar settings. That's where I would use the user template. The other thing we can do is add multiple users. And this is kind of convenient because I can download a CSV file. Let's go ahead and download this CSV file that includes sample user info. I'm going to open it up. And with my luck, it opens up on my second monitor. So I'm going to drag it down here so that we can see it. All right, so here we have our headings. So username, first name, last name, display name, job title. And remember, all of these things, well, not all of these things. A bunch of these things are going to be optional. You may not have to put them in. But the idea is if I want to create a bunch of users, I can just take this template and I can fill in a bunch of data for all of my users. And once I get all that done, I can save the file. I don't want it right now. I can save the file and then I can use that file here, upload CSV file with your information. I'll browse to locate the file, I'll find the file, and then when I click Next, it will read up to, you'll see it right here, 249 users per CSV file. And then I can set licenses and finish. Now, some people really like this, and it can be kind of a convenient tool, but it's not horribly flexible. So if I do it this way, I'm assigning the same licenses to all of the users that are in my CSV file. And again, I'm capped out here at 249 users per CSV file. Sometimes, if you're comfortable with PowerShell, it's going to be easier to actually do this in PowerShell. If you're comfortable with it, you can create scripts that will automate this process, and you can get those scripts way more customized than this process is. So that's something you may want to take a look at, and that's using the add msol user uh, commandlet in PowerShell. All right, the other thing I want you to see here, here's where we delete a user, reset password, export users, set up directory synchronization. So this gives me a little more. 
a few more options. I can also open up my user account just by clicking on it. And this is where I'm going to go through and modify the user. So I have my account information, username, last sign on. I can sign them out of all sessions, set an alternate email address, define which groups they're part of, set their manager, their contact information, their roles. I can identify their devices, manage their licenses, Take a look at their mail settings, which we haven't configured yet, or OneDrive settings. Here's also where I can delete the user, block sign in, or reset password. So the things you're going to do on a regular basis are going to be, hope, hopefully you're not resetting and deleting users too much, but those are things that we find ourselves doing quite a bit as administrators. People forget their passwords, we need to reset them. Um, somebody goes on vacation or leaves the company, we need to block sign in. And then sooner or later we may want to delete it. Delete the user account. Okay, the other thing I have access to right here is a filter. <clears throat> So I can filter, and I've got a bunch of predefined filters here. So let me see all of my unlicensed users. And also it's going to show me just my unlicensed users. And you'll see my filter now displays which filter that I'm using. Let me go back to all users, and that will display all of my users again. So a lot of predefined filters here that are very useful. Let me view all of my global admins. And there is just one. I can also create a new filter right here. And so I can set a name for my filter. And when I create this, I'll be able to keep it and use it again. And then I can specify by domain, sign in status, location, product license, department, city. And this is where some of that information that we could have put in when we created the user account becomes really beneficial. So I can create a filter and say, show me everybody who works in Seattle, or show me everyone who works in LA, or everyone who works in Yakima. Or I can say, show me everybody with, you know, who has a job title of salesperson. Show me everybody from the state of Hawaii. So that becomes really convenient. And then I've got a few other conditions here that I can apply. And when I'm done with all of this, I just hit add and that will give me my custom filter. And then I can display my custom filter. It'll just show up in my list here. And I can use that custom filter whenever I want. If I want to get rid of my filtering, then I just click clear filter. Last thing to see here is I can search Active Directory. So let's say I have, you know, a thousand users here and I know I want to work with George. So I'm going to do a search for George and it'll come back and find everybody for me whose name starts with George. So that becomes very, very convenient. All right. So that should give you a quick rundown of how we can create and then manage users inside Office 365 Azure Active Directory.